So I'm not exactly a big fan of unboxing videos, but looking at this online and looking at what comes and doesn't come with this, it might be a little bit hard to tell. Um, I've got the PMX5 CAN. I think CAN means it's ready for CAN bus operation. Generally speaking, this is a marine radio meant for boats, but the size of it is about a DIN .75, and so if you're using one of these GM trucks, several different ones, the GMT 400s, the GMT 800s, all of them came with a DIN and a half, as did certain models of the S10s and S10 Blazers, whole slew of GMs that came with that GM DIN and a half radio. This might be an option for you. What I like is you look at the faceplate on this thing, big giant volume button, simple big buttons, subwoofer control here, source button here, your menu button here, you know, forward, backwards, play, pause. There's a zone function here because this thing, if you got a bigger boat, has several zones it could do. But for my truck, yeah, Suburban is something of a boat, but not that much of a boat. So what you get in here, obviously a nice, a full booklet, not one of those stupid sheets that Pioneer was doing where it's like, oh, you can download the rest of them. But in the package, that's something I didn't see online that anybody made clear was does it or does it not come with a connector? It does. So standard automotive coloring scheme here. So I can hook it up with my General Motors 88 to 05 style hookup. Um, and you look on the back, this is where it gets different. And they do it this way. I like it too because you got these caps already on it, but they do it this way because this thing is totally dust and waterproof. Nice schematic on the back side of it. Let me get it out of here. So there it is out of its wrapper. And so you look, the box size is about a den and a half, but the actual casing is a single den. And that actually works out pretty well with the way these GMs actually go in there, and I'll show you that when I install it. It justifies it just slightly more to the top, which helps it fit better because it means the bottom isn't going to interfere with the HVAC controls. So I'm liking that a lot. Um, it is going to be a little bit deeper. And then my other concern here too is all of this cabling. I mean, that's a lot of stuff to be stuffing in behind my dash. But what I'm thinking is anything I'm not using, I'll tape to the top side because you'll have that clearance. And because all I'm really interested in, yeah, obviously this USB port that I can snake into the back to the pocket. And that Molex connector, but this, what was this one? That's the only one that's not labeled, that's fun. Pop it and look, it's one of the S-Video connectors, so... I don't know, someone smarter than me can say what that is. I know the guy in the, the store was telling me what it is. The rest are all marked. So CAN bus interface for that one. And you got all of these different RCAs coming out. Subwoofer line out, it's marked. You know, aux input, that's you know for other stuff. Rear line out, so there's your rear set. And that's what we got. So look, I do like the, the heat shrink and the wrapper is labeled for exactly what it's a zone two line out if you're gonna do another zone front line out. So if you're doing another zone, that means you could add a whole another set of speakers in this truck. It's a curious idea too. You could bias the, the sound one way or another in a big Suburban, but for me that just means you have, for zone two, that's a whole another line out for a whole another amplifier if you're doing a serious sound system. And those guys that do the competition stuff. What else is in this bundle? Can interface, Sirius XM, so if you want that you've got Sirius XM capability and SWI input. Don't know. Doesn't apply to me, so again, a lot of this stuff, I'm probably just gonna tuck it under and tape it down or something, but tuck it under there and shove it in that way, other than the ones that I need. I mean, yeah, this, this Molex, a little bit bulky. If you got good glasses, you can read that. It'll give you exactly what everything is, what its voltage and everything is. Standard automotive stuff, though. I mean, that's a little bulkier than what you're used to seeing in automotive because in a boat you got a ton more room. But and then you get a spare cover plate, I guess. A piece of strapping. Because again you got that stud back there. So you could strap it in somewhere somehow to hang it on the back. A set of screws. But this plate would go on the back side of the dash, and that was something I couldn't see either, is these are actually threaded. 
So you can't see that online, but that is, it's punched and threaded. And you can see on the back side here, you got the holes here. So this will be on the front side of the dash. This plate will slide in on the back side of the dash and it bolts it together so it clamps it to the dash. And you'll see in a minute how I'm going to do that. Because you look, and you got your four mounting screws that go here. And this cover plate will snap on the top of it. Nice beauty ring, whatever you want to call it. So this is going to be an unorthodox way to solve the whole problem I've got with my stereo that I just don't, I don't want to go through the trouble of hacking in a, a full double din. And I don't like single dins either because they don't look right. And that short chassis that I've got in there right now, this Rockford Fosgate deal, much better quality deck. And with a rear USB, I don't have this cable hanging out front. I hate that. can't stand that this didn't have a rear USB. Because I do have a hole drilled up in there for the USB to come out there so the iPod and everything can just sit in this pocket and be out of the way and this cable's not in the way. It's not... It just looks trashy that way to me. And I know modern day, all you young kids, you like your Bluetooth stuff. I don't. I don't want Bluetooth. I'd rather just have something like this where my iPod has my entire library of music in it and not just my phone which has select playlists. This truck, the one that I sit in the most, this Suburban, I want the entire iPod. The only other place I have an iPod is, well, that shop radio over there. That has my other iPod and you can see it right there. So, entire library available when I'm working in the garage, entire library on long road trips in this truck. That'd be the why and wherefore of that, and why I'm not like you young kids with all your Bluetooth this, Bluetooth that, Bluetooth everything. But yeah, let's get into this. So first things first, I move that seat all the way down and all the way back. And then, crank the steering wheel down, and these just pull off. So if you haven't done one of these GMT 400s, so yeah, it's just simply that. Let's get this, just pull those out. Yeah, it does help to pull that cup holder out. I forgot that part this. Oh, that's the other thing. You want to drop your shifter stick. Let me find the keys. Let's set my parking brake too, just because I'm messing with the shifter. But So drop the shifter, so that way this portion can come off. And this is something I'm probably going to solve. This two-piece pocket thing. I think I'm going to glue that together this time. Looks like I may have tried before, just using silicone. But that thing is always coming apart before I want it to. All right, so that all snaps off. There's another one back there, and yeah, you just gently, you can see where all the clips are at up here, 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 here. So they're just, they're on the back side there, these clips. To get those clips off. Now me, I do need to pull this whole panel. But so, let's get on over here. Your light switch needs to come out. So come around in here. You notice there's a tab right there that you can push and pull that connector out with. I can't do it with a camera in my hand, but that's what you're looking for. Pull that connector, you can leave the whole switch attached to your dash. And if you've got fine. the electronic four-wheel drive like I do, this is the point where you pull out these two. And they have tabs on the side. That one, <laughs> that came out easy because I broke the tab some time ago. Tells you how many times I've done this every time I want to do a new switch. But yeah, let me, this one here, the blue one, I just get that out. I need two hands for that, so just that switch is the last thing to free this up. So now you get a look at what the installation kit is that I was talking about, that it has this whole ring that fits into the factory, the two little tabs here and here, but that centers it. And the other thing I was talking about, there's a ton of room that's going to be up in here where I can tuck all that excess wire and cord and stuff, so it should work pretty neatly. And this, I've never liked how these aren't, they're not as stable as I would like. I mean, look how much movement that has. But by actually taking it and making this just a centering ring, it's not. I'm not even going to attach the Rockford Fosgate to this at all. It's just going to be in there to center it, and it's going to be attached to the dash with that steel ring. Which means I'll be able to pull the, the deck out without even touching, removing all the dash like I've done here. Um, but yeah, let's, let's see if what I think I'm doing is going to work. So I just need to pull this out. Alright, so getting that out is just simply, if you can see that nice and close, those little catches lift up and it pulls out. And then there's that. This is the aftermarket hookup for it. All the pins you might need. Alright, let's take this out to the bench. And it just slides out of there. Now you got the radio free. You got this whole thing. And this is one of those universal kits where what you need gets bolted into it. 
and you see that just simple machine screws and I got a different style one I don't know if this one will be more solid or not feels heavier this one's light so this one's a Metra it's, it's marked in there right there and that's the one I want to say I snagged this last time Metra, I was picking up like as well these, just... these brackets will hold more of that radio body we'll see that in a second okay so it's not a totally tight fit like I would like I suppose I could shim that with something somehow but again this isn't really to do much more than locate the radio in in position okay, that's something of a disappointment this is aluminum wire yeah. all of these looks like all of it all of its aluminum wire in here that's a bit of a disappointment but the scotch stuff's all copper but the stuff that came with Rockford Fosgate's aluminum in the end will that really make a difference mm, probably not because honestly the only ones that are running off the, the speakers anyway that are running off are these ones the rear so the six benigns that are in the rear position back here those are running off of this so that aluminum short leg of it I don't know I don't think it'll bother me yeah let me start getting back to it okay so what I'm after here is deep pinning wires that aren't used this one on the GM side of things would be if you had an automatic antenna and these are kind of cool in these things if I ever wanted to use them again so I'm gonna save them and that's the funny one with this radio too is it only has the accessory on the red power which is fused here at the radio it doesn't have a yellow coming out now the yellow in a standard automotive one would be memory so I don't know if this just has a battery internal or what because what you're getting is orange for illumination you're getting yellow and I double check in here and that's what it says illumination just like standard auto auto applications you know, so I don't, never had a boat myself so I don't know if there'd be any big difference in boats so all right there it is there's my harness all done up I was able to deep in those ones nice and neat fought me a little bit I tried this screwdriver first then I tried this pick the pick seemed to have done it better but these ones, you can tell I just ripped them out. Pretty brutal, but I never played with this Molex. And then this, this has a rubber gasket thing that, well, that's pretty cool and all. I'm not sure how they seat it back in fully, because I'm not fully seated, but I don't know that it really matters where I'm using it. I'm not in a boat. So I'm not expecting to get too wet, too dusty. <clears throat> got a new butane torch. You got to hold the heat off a little bit. Looks like everything here is a good solid crimp and a good solid glue, so that's all watertight. And I'm more worried about anything coming across. There's my remote turn-on coming from the stereo. <clears throat> and that'll hook up to the remote turn-on blue wire that goes to the amp. It's going to be cool. I'm going to have a total Rockford Fosgate system yeah, here. So this is all set up for my Suburban. The only speakers coming out of the deck are for those, like I said, those rears, the purples and greens. But as I knew it would be. This whole mess of wires is hard to shove back in there, and there's no way I'm going to get it past that opening. All right, just using some simple JB weld. I don't know if plastic bonder is the right choice for this, but that's what I'm using. It's what I've got. And that metal backing plate. I played around with how this fits and how it sits in there nicely enough. And so it fits. Those screw holes all fit within the confines of the original stock opening which is kind of nice I think so I've glued it down with copious amounts of JB Weld I'll let that set up 15 minutes it says I've had different results and then I'm gonna try to figure out I don't like the idea of this just hanging on the dash I want more support for it so I'm gonna try to figure out how to slice this up and it may be just simple cut them off each side and that way I can slip all the wiring where I need it to go. Maybe just the top. Or maybe both. Maybe I just slice straight down here and here. Here and here. And then clip these in the side because then it gives me the brackets here that will give some support to the radio. I think also I am going to get into the dash and I'm going to cut out some of that plastic there with my plunge saw. 
already had it out because there was a rib that goes between these two. Right, you can see the piece I was removing there. It's just this little back strap here, piece of scrap. So maybe that give me a little bit more room. Did my best not to dig into that plenum. I don't think I did. Maybe gouged it a hair, but not much. Hopefully that gives me more room. Just doing everything I can to clearance it. I know if you put a double dent in here, you have to clearance that stuff. So we'll see. We'll see what see I can do. See how my harness is integrated. There's the remote turn on. I'm using a butt connector in case I want to take it out again sometime. I'm tired of splicing and cutting, splicing and cutting. Just tucking the antenna up in there as far as I can, tucking all the stuff as far as I can. But that's out, so that should give me a little bit more room. I think that may have been one of the points of interference. But otherwise, I'm going to get back to that bracket. I, I'm still going to use that bracket somehow. So this may indeed be a harebrained idea, but I have a habit of making harebrained ideas work. So like I said, I get the bracketry in here, and it flops around now. I can basically pull it out to the side, but that may give me the support I need. that ties it into the structure of the dash instead of hanging on the dash fascia. My only concern is I know that this face is tight. So I think I'll pull out the sander and sand those down a hair. So if you look at this, that steel is nice and thin. I'm not going to have to take too much off of the face of this. And there's room to do it with. The plastic's plenty thick. Just take a little bit off to clearance it for this plate. Should be alright. Epoxy's setting up. Looks like it's going to hold just fine. And you know, JB Weld. Million uses for this stuff, right? That's the other thing I did while I was at it. This two-piece pocket thing. That front fascia of it has always fallen off anytime I screw with the dash in any way, shape, or form. So I just epoxied it together. While I was at it with the epoxy, just pressed it on down and let it set up now. Now, no problems. You can see also, there's what I was talking about. I clearanced this back hole here to fit a USB through it. Is this another Metro piece? You see the regular standard ones are, yeah, you know, they're a little smaller, so I widened that out just. Yeah, what I did that with, probably just a knife. Just carve the plastic away till I can fit a USB through there. Which is all I need to do through the USB through here and then back to the back of the radio. So, alright, back at it. Yeah, so I got a little bit sloppy on the front side. But that is okay. At least I know it's pretty much making full contact everywhere. May have wanted to put some weight on it. I don't know if that... 15 minute epoxy, it's still tacky. And I'm not worried about the mess on the front side, except for places like that. Because the radio fascia itself is gonna cover all that up. All right, clearance seems to be all right. But since those things sit right up against that metal plate, those silver dots, I gotta drill some clearance holes. Or else I'll never get the set screws in there. But, it seems to be coming together. We'll see in another half hour or so if I'm half as ready as I wanna be. All right, there we go. Drilled some clearance holes in them, and I oversized them a lot, not for the screws, but for the indentation those little punch-out thread-outs make. So there'll be no interference with that. Those can slip in and hopefully help center these things. So we'll see. All right, it's close. As you can see, I've still got that finger widths of interference, and I'm not going to try to screw that down. It might snap the plastic. So the game is... Pull this out and try to tuck everything up and under and wherever you can to get it out of the way. It's getting it to fold in the back. That's the hard point. But yeah, it. I knew it wasn't going to be easy, so here we go. So I know there's space back up in there, in here. Just keeping these things from tucking under or something. So I'm going to tape them up top side. These are Sirius XM and steering wheel controls and all of the crap that I'm not using. Everything else should, and I'm trying to work in it, you know, work in that whole cavity back there, try to force it all down and under the radio where there's also more space. Because I'm pretty certain that I am up against the back of that plenum back there. I just need to keep all this stuff out of the way. I'm close. I'm, I'm within like a quarter of an inch close. So hopefully this will help get these out of the way, get all that stuff to tuck down, get it to slide into here. Those holes are matching up. 
and it's actually given a little bit more of a tight fit for the actual casing. So things are things are progressing. It's just not easy. So here we go. So I'm sitting here playing with it, playing with it, and I'm getting so close, and there's something that's forcing the radio down. Or something interfering, and I think it is in fact this piece here. I gotta remove all of that too. The well, only hesitation about that is there's some clips right here that hold up the air plenum, but I don't know that that's really that necessary. That may be just something for the dash to hang on to, but I'm going to remove it. I'm going to take that stuff out because I think that is what is keeping me from putting this all the way back in. And i got to be careful because i got the antenna wire and i got some sort of other control wire back there, so I need to push those way out of the way. I'll get in there with the plunge saw and I'm removing that piece. I thought I could do it without that, but I think that sits exactly where this all sits. So i got to get that done. This right here is what makes the plunge saw one of my most favorite tools I've ever purchased. Getting in there with anything else, I don't know of anything else that could do this. I think I gotta take those two tabs off too. And see those. I think I gotta buzz those off and then I think everything will actually fit in after Here's a this. point of view that kind of shows you that there is a ton of room underneath the radio to stuff a lot of wiring and junk. It's just that rear clearance that's the headache. So now that I've cleared all that out, let's see if we can put this together. There's a point to make about this right here. This Molex will go either way. So make sure you're lining up and you can kind of key off of the orange or the black or both. And make sure you're lining them up so you've got the right orientation for it all. Yeah, I don't know what will happen if you flip it the other way. It might bust the whole radio. I don't know. Might do nothing. But... Yeah, just notice that. So, all right, fighting around with these thing, this thing earlier, just noticing these aren't exactly the most secure connection ever, and they came loose. So I am gonna tape them up, try to keep them together. All right, it's in, it's working. Just on FM right now, I haven't plugged in the iPod. I'll tell you what, trim ring on. I cannot get that last little bit of gap to close. I don't know why. I don't know what. Um, my thought is maybe the best way to go about this would have been to do a trim ring on the outside, another piece of ABS plastic or something. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's a volume for both zones. Cool display. I haven't really started playing with this yet, but it's in. It's pretty freaking solid. I got both of those side brackets to work. So it's pretty secure in there. And the side brackets and where I glued in, I thought I was pretty good with what I did, but I was off by just enough to make it an interference fit. So, hey, interference is fine because that actually gives it, it's pretty freaking solid. If I drive those screws any further, then I start pulling the dash back off. So this is where it's going to sit. But I think, you know, if you're not too concerned about the fact that this does stick out proud, it fits the space a heck of a lot better than a single den, and it's not running, it's not rattling around like that stupid Pioneer single den one did either. And again, like I said, what I like about this too is big giant buttons, not that small tiny crap that you get on most of your aftermarket decks. You know, forward, backwards, play, pause, the zone stuff I may never even use. And you got a GMT 400 or any, any sort of GM. I don't know about the 800s, I don't know how much room they've got back behind there. But these 400s, for sure and certain, if you've got the new 90s, the late 90s dash. The early 90s dash, now you're, you're stuck. Like the 88 to 94 dash, whenever they did that one, you're stuck. you got a single den radio. Um, you might... What I'd do for that one, and you'd, you'd have to have an amplifier to run all of your speakers then, is get the PMX3. And if you know how those, those dashes worked, where the, you know, the 90... The 88 style dash. That you had that one smaller block, those PMX3s would fit in there. Cool idea I might play someday. Someday when I pick up another uh, OBS Chevy. But that's what it looks like, that's what it does. I'll go through all the music functions on my own so I don't get any copyright strikes. Probably already got plenty with the music playing in the background. Um. But yeah, if this has been curious to you as it has been to me, Merry Christmas to me, I've got it done. If you think you might want it, yeah. Check Crutchfield out. 
they uh, crutchfield.com they were running this radio on a special for 350 so fifty dollars off but I hope this does you a, a good look at what this would look like and that yeah it does actually fit pretty well just knowing that you're surface mounting it um, it's not a flush mount like you'd have and from what I see it's not going to be in the way of my shift lever a nice big knob for volume I like that but yeah so if you've come this far, you've seen it, you, you see what it looks like, appreciate you watching. Do all the things that make uh, YouTube great. Like the, like the video, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell, comment, tell me I'm an idiot and I don't care. It's my truck, I do what I want, and you do what your truck is. And if you want a negative comment on somebody's video, I always live by the rule that uh, don't make a negative comment unless you've got something different to show on your channel. That's why probably nine times out of ten... More than that, probably 99 out of 100, I don't do negative comments on people. That's just, I don't know, that's just rude, I think. You're not proving anything. But yeah, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Hope you have a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. And uh, next stereo video you should see, we'll be fixing the S10's mess. But yeah, we'll catch you on the next one.